Hello aviators, Sky here, and today we get out of the Maybach and drive a motorcycle. Instead of huge aircraft factories with thousands of workers, we have a hangar with cheerful guys, and instead of Seattle and Toulouse, we have Serpukhov. Yes, today we visit Agan aircraft again, and yes, these guys made another plane. We are already familiar with Agan aircraft, there is already a video on the channel about their previous brainchild the GN-155 light aircraft, which by the way feels great, it's slowly being produced and delivered to customers. In that video, walking around the site of the company, we saw what was then a fuselage frame of their future brainchild, the so-called bush plane. What kind of class is this? Many planes can be described in terms of takeoff and landing performance, from commercial airlines that need miles of polished runways to operate to light aircraft that needs hundreds of meters of unpaved runway. Our hero belongs to the class of aircraft that require something relatively solid and at least a little horizontal, a kind of wild off-road vehicles with the ability to perform short takeoffs and landings in a rather raw form. An excellent solution for hard-to-reach areas where the most unexpected places can act as an airfield. The first time I saw the design of the new aircraft, I laughed saying that it would be great for the post-apocalypse. And now we have to emphasize that it was a joke, and let's not check. Let's get acquainted. The Bush 505 SL Starlifter So, Starlifter is a rather large transport in its class, an all-metal high-wing aircraft capable of operating on unprepared runways. Wait. That's the wrong Starlifter. Our Starlifter is a rather large transport in its class, an all-metal high-wing aircraft capable of operating on unprepared runways. Naturally, it's not alone in its class, but there are quite a few bushes in the world. But the Bush 505 is different. It is 7.1 meter long, has a wingspan of 10.75 meters and a fin height of 2.25 meters. Compared to its relatives, it is a big guy. Of course, this affected the mass. Its maximum takeoff is almost a ton, with an empty mark of 570 kilograms. The Bush 505 SL Starlifter, we called it. A two-seat machine with a large trunk. And its distinguishing feature from similar aircraft in light aviation is its dimensions. That is, it is slightly larger than all of its counterparts. Mostly, such machines are made from welded truss structures which are a power element, and then they are covered with synthetics, fiberglass, and other materials. In this design, we decided to abandon the soft hull. The aircraft is all metal, made of aluminum. Our load-bearing structure is a fully riveted fuselage, a beam stringer structure that takes all the loads. And in fact, such a design is quite undemanding in operation and maintainable. Our wing is single-braced, that is, one strut holds all flight loads, which distinguishes it from analogs, on which two struts are often made. This is due to the fact that the struts take the torsion of the wing since the soft hull is used. Our hull is rigid, it works on torsion. Meanwhile, its goal setting nevertheless remains to be able to perform short takeoffs and landings from runways that can hardly be called runways, which means having a powerful landing gear that absorbs bumps and with an increased mass maintaining fairly low minimum speeds, because flopping into the field at 100 knots is not the greatest joy. Let's see how the airframe solves this problem. First of all, we are talking about the wing. The wing is straight with an advanced profile and a large area. But the most interesting thing, of course, are the high-lift devices. Our wing has a fairly advanced mechanization, a double-slotted flap with a fixed deflector, which has several positions and is controlled using a handle located in the cockpit. That is, it is not an electric drive, but a handle. Thus, it is possible to quickly bring the flap to the required position which is important for such aircraft. Next, on the trailing edge, at the end of the wing, is the control surface, the aileron. It also has a slot, which contributes to better control at high angles and at low speeds. Double-slotted flap with a fixed deflector. 
And this is in the class of aircraft, in which the flap is often a simple turning surface made of fabric stretched over the frame. One of the features of the Bush 505 is the family nuance of a gun aircraft. They are structurally more ambitious and more complex than their counterparts, and in the case of aircraft that in theory should be no more complicated than a moped, this is felt especially clearly. A gun aircraft treat their planes as technology demonstrators. They develop their production site, purchase new materials and equipment, gain competencies and pump it all into their offspring completely. And the offspring, accordingly, become cooler and yes, more complex. I know one American company that also likes to indulge in this. The most striking example of this practice in a gun is the prototype of a new flap for the GN-155 and Bush 505, which is still on the stand. Why do light aircraft need a flap like that of the Boeing 777? Ask them yourself. Also, a feature of this aircraft, which significantly improves its flight performance, are automatic slats. Another design trick of the Aguns. Not only are there dynamic slats, but they are also have two sections, two independent surfaces on each console. The slats do not add any load to the pilot, they are automatic. Why are they automatic? You can see that they float freely here. They do not have a drive and operate solely from aerodynamic forces. That is, the kinematics are adjusted in such a way that at small angles these slats close, which directs the flow along the wing and provides a non-separated airflow at high angles of attack. Someone will say that this is a bit complicated, in a sense that this is rarely seen even in larger machines. But so what? For the efficiency of the wing, this is a clear plus. The tail section of the aircraft is also all metal, of classic design, stabilizer, fin, and control surfaces. On the control surfaces, these horn-like compensators are installed, which allows to reduce the load on the handles in the longitudinal and track channel. And anti-flutter balancers are also located here, which allow the aircraft to accelerate quite well and not be afraid to fall into dangerous phenomena. Well, another feature of this tail is that it is not flat, like its counterparts, but has a profile, both vertical and horizontal. What was it done for? Firstly, in order for the structure itself to take all loads, bending, and so on. But also, it adds to the aerodynamics of the aircraft, which allows such a profile tail at low speeds and high angles to behave much more stable and quickly recover if some unintentional disruption of the tail occurs. Again, I note that on similar aircraft that have a welded truss structure, they often put a flat welded tail and reinforce it with additional cables for rigidity. Here we managed to avoid this, therefore the aerodynamics of the aircraft has been improved. The fiery heart of this aircraft is the Belgian UL power engine. This aircraft has the option with 180 horsepower. The 520th engine is six-cylinder. It is gearless and rotates a propeller with variable pitch in flight. As a result, this power plant carries the entire machine quite efficiently. That is, we can both take off quickly and fly at a sufficient cruising speed. Here Agon carried out some unification of the model range. The GN-155 is also lifted by the brainchild of UL Power, only there is a simpler 4-cylinder 350i 118-horsepower engine. There, the fiery heart proved to be very good, combining reliability, efficiency and power, and deviators are already working with the ULs, so the more powerful 520i should show itself worthy. Of course, the desire to make it cooler could not bypass the power plant. If 180 horsepower may not seem enough to some, Starlifter can be equipped with a more powerful 200 horsepower Lycoming IO360 engine. This engine is even more famous, it is used on so many planes. The fuel supply of the aircraft is pretty impressive, two tanks in the wing with 115 liters each. With a rather modest consumption of a single engine, such a reserve should be enough for about 1,300 kilometers, 
quite a lot, an indicator of such machines as, for example, the Cessna 172. Thanks to all these solutions, the Bush 505, being a larger and heavier aircraft, managed to maintain excellent flight performances, allowing it to successfully compete with its brothers. Cruising speed with the UL power engine is about 100 knots, and with the more powerful Lycoming, it reaches 126 knots. Not bad. Meanwhile, the stall speed when using mechanization is only about 37 knots, 69 kilometers per hour. Takeoff distance 90 meters, landing about 100 meters. Okay, enough about aerodynamics. Let's take a look at the most striking part of this class of aircraft, which actually made them flying SUVs. Hefty wheels. The tricycle landing gear with a tail lag is a classic landing gear that is used on such aircraft, and it has a very developed shock absorption, as well as low pressure pneumatics, which together allow the aircraft to easily pass quite large bumps on the surface, as well as take significant loads upon landing. Moreover, the wheels not only look like they were drawn on the blueprint with a marker by a child, but these pneumatics are under pressure of only 0.3 atmospheres. Unusual! On a car, 0.3 atmospheres would mean that you are driving practically on rim. And here it is soft. And the concept works great. Not only do the wheels absorb all the bumps when driving on rough terrain, they most importantly allow for very rough landings. The Bush 505 can fall into the landing site from a height of a couple of meters, and it can be considered a normal landing. The tail lag also works with the help of a liquid gas shock absorber, which is hidden here. All shock absorbers can regulate pressure. An interesting solution. In addition to the differential control of the brakes of the main gear legs, as is done for all such aircraft, the tail lag is also controlled here. The pedals are tied to the tail lag by means of kinematics and cables, that is, this is additional control in transient modes. When there is no airflow on the rudders yet, but the aircraft already has some forward speed, so by turning the tail wheel, the aircraft is better controlled. Now let's see why it was so necessary to increase the size and weight of the aircraft. Let's climb inside and we smoothly move on to the interior space. This is the cockpit. The plane, as I said, is a two-seater. The alignment is calculated so that the main pilot sits here, and the passenger, or the co-pilot, or for example, in the training version, the instructor, sits behind. Moreover, the aircraft can be used for training. As its controls are fully duplicated, both pilots have a control stick and pedals. Also, the plane has a fairly roomy luggage compartment. Again, the aircraft is slightly larger than its counterparts, and all internal volumes are also proportionally bigger, and you can put much more things here and feel much more comfortable if you are a passenger or a pilot. Our seats can be adjusted. The pilot's seat is adjustable in length and height. The rear seat is only adjustable in length. We can also quickly dismantle it, remove it, dismantle the stick, and this will be a space just for luggage. We can put a lot of things here. By the way, I felt these bonuses on myself in flight. For machines of this class, the cabin is very spacious and quite comfortable. You can safely both pilot it and go about your business without fear of bumping your head on structural elements. Plus, the view is gorgeous, even from the back seat. Another bonus of the large size is a hefty door that allows you to quickly get in and out of the plane without having to do it in any particular order, move seats, and endure other inconveniences that are characteristic to many cramped Bosch planes. Avionics of the aircraft, no matter how crude an off-road vehicle it may be, is quite decent with familiar elements. On this plane, as instrumentation, we have the Garmin G3X multifunctional display. And in fact, this display provides complete flight information. That is, it works as a flight instrument, as a navigation instrument, and as a propulsion instrument. So everything is displayed on it. But we also have two more analog devices. They are needed as backup. By the way, engine control is located on the left side and is also duplicated for both the front 
and rear pilots. Agon Aircraft created the aircraft exclusively on its own, without any large-scale outside support, be it some large private investors or government support, which is why it is interesting to observe how, in general, an extremely modest team by the standards of aviation managed this. And they managed. In two years, it seems a long time, but again, by the standards of modern aviation, quite quickly. The test cycle was also quite complicated, but it was carried out painstakingly and at all stages. No cheating. The new design was tested for strength in all potential situations. Components and assemblies worked out their loads, and the systems worked out their functionality. Finally, in the spring of 2022, the aircraft took off for the first time, and this landmark even became the new stage in endless checks – fly tests. The Bush 505 was flown with one pilot, with a passenger and with cargo, in normal weather conditions and in abnormal ones, from dead calm to strong winds, including side ones. The result was excellent, the design calculations were confirmed, and already now, by the fall of 2022, the Bush 505 SL Starlifter can be considered a full-fledged aircraft, ready for mass production and deliveries. We are happy to inform you that we have finally finished this aircraft. We have been building it for two difficult years, and finally it is ready. It is already flying and has confirmed its flight performance. So, the aircraft at this stage is completely ready for mass production. We hope that this aircraft will continue being developed, modernized, and mass produced. We are looking for partners for creating a joint venture and mass production. We have all the technology, we have people, we have a team, we have designers. We plan to expand and we plan to mass produce this aircraft in quick assembly kits. With the help of our instructions and support, you will be able to assemble this aircraft without any problems. For the cost and conditions, you can visit our website or call the company's phones and you will be consulted. Naturally, we hope that this aircraft will occupy a worthy niche in light aviation around the world. Well, it remains for me to wish good luck to the guys from Agon Aircraft in the release of a new model and pleasure in piloting to the future owners of this model. And I think we will meet with our aviators again, completing the tests of the bush they have already begun testing, another one of their curious bird. All aircraft manufacturers should be so ambitious. Like and subscribe to the channel, lovers of everything flying, fast flights on cool planes, and soft landings to you. Thank you very much. See you again.